Hi, this is Paul Rudwick with Clark County. Today I'm going to talk to you about floodplains, specifically how to determine a base flood elevation in an approximate A zone. Now, if you don't know what an approximate A zone is, basically is a zone in FEMA's flood mapping which hasn't had a full study done. So there is no base flood elevation, essentially the water surface elevation for a 100-year flow condition. So where do we start? Well, the two things we need to figure out are what is the 100-year flow, 100-year flood flow running through here, or the 1% flood flow, and then how do we put that into a model that we can figure out how that flood flow is going to move hydraulically through this channel. So let's first go to the hydrology or the trying to figure out what the flood flow is. So I'm going to use this website called StreamStats, which is created by USGS, and it's really snazzy. It's not a perfect tool by any means, but it will get us where we need to go for this property. So I'm telling it to use Washington's data. And this basically uh, pixelates stream information. And I'll show you just how snazzy this is. I'll pick a line. Now it's delineating a basin. It's going to figure out the basin area flowing to this. Now this is pretty crude. I mean, it doesn't take into account piping or road ditches and that sort of thing. Um, but for our purposes, and definitely for the approximate A zone um, determination that we're trying to do, it's going to give us just enough information. So probably a good step to do would be to look and make sure that this makes sense. Um, you can see there's a big stream running back through here, and all this water is flowing to the stream, which eventually makes it down to this point. So if I want to, I can edit my basin, but I'm just going to accept this, call it good. You can also download the basin as a shapefile, which is pretty snazzy. And I'm going to want my peak flow characteristics here. Now I'm going to tell it which basin characteristics I want. I'm going to select all just so I can see them all. Okay, it's going to give me a report. And there we go. It gives me all the 120 square miles, which is a pretty big basin. Um, you can see 68% tree cover, so it's pretty rural area, not a lot of development. So this is the data that it uses to generate this peak flow. Come down here, we can get our flood flow of 21, 11, 21, 100. So that is the flood flow that we could use for our model. However, there's another slightly more accurate way to do it that I think is a good idea to always check. Another thing to do is look on this information and see if there are any stream gauges nearby. And as it turns out, there are. There's one right downstream. So basically what you do is uh, you figure out what the 100-year flow is here. You figure out what the basin area is going to this, and then you adjust for the basin area going to this. Um, now, if we were if we were trying to go down to you know something way down here, then could be a, a huge, hugely different area, type of ground cover, all that sort of stuff. So that wouldn't necessarily be a good idea. But because we have one just downstream, this is really convenient. So I can go in here, click on here, and I can get my 100-year peak value, 23, 100. Now, if you'll remember, I have a slightly bigger drainage area, so I have 125. I'm realizing that I didn't actually um, show you this PowerPoint that I had over here. So this is the formula that it uses, uh, constant A, B, C, and then big A for flow area and precipitation. Um, the second thing we're going to do is a stream gauge, which uses log Pearson type 3. So they determine the stream gauge at that um, at that basin. Using the stream gauge methodology, we end up with 2,900, which compared to our 21,100 is pretty darn close. So I feel pretty good about using the bigger value, but um, sometimes you can get wildly different results, so I definitely would check. If you have a stream gauge nearby, that's always often going to be the most, actually, if it's nearby, it's always going to be more accurate. If it's far away, it may not be that accurate. So we have our stream flow that we can use here. All right, now let's talk about hydraulics. Um, pretty, some pretty amazing features have been set up in HECRAS, which I'm going to show you. Um, but first, what we need to do is pull some LIDAR data. Let's just zoom in. 
Go old school. And this is basically where I am. So I, what I can do is I can select this area of interest. And basically this is going to pull every one of the uh, available DTM and GIS LiDAR data available. So I see there's a 2002 as well as a 2017. So I'm going to take my 2017 digital terrain model and download 600 megabytes. It's pretty big. So I've actually already done this, so I'm not going to re-download it. Okay, so basically what I did, here's that 600 megabyte file I brought in. I can just bring this right in. I'm going to turn off the other one. And I can, this is a cool new feature. And I actually have brought in these other areas just so I know here's the tax lot. This is where the property is. I can just right click on this, go to data, export raster. There's some an export raster command you can use if you have ArcMap. Um, but I can pick where I want it to go. Again, I really like this feature right here, clipping geometry. I can just do current display extent, so then I can you know, make it bigger or smaller and it automatically makes a clip area. Save it to a TIFF is what I'm gonna to wanna to save it as. Um, and then I can export it. And this is what I end up with. There you go, a smaller version of you know, the information that I want. So, now that I have that, I've actually already saved that right here. I'm going to open up HECRAS. Definitely use a newer HECRAS. I think 5.05 .05 has a lot of the features that we really want to use for this project. Training. Yeah, I'm going to call it. Let's overwrite the one that I already have. So once I go there, normally you would go to the geometry data. But instead of doing that, we're going to go into the RAS mapper. And we are going to, it looks like I already have some stuff in here. What I want to do first, go in here, some projection, which I brought in. The projection is going to be something that you can grab from the GIS file. Any GIS PRJ file will work um, that has the right datum and elevation and all that stuff. And projection. Make sure that it's not a RAS PRJ file. Those, it has the same extension, which is extremely confusing. So that's the first thing you do. Then you come in here and you bring in a terrain. Um, and there's two ways to do this. You can either create a new RAS terrain, which you would bring in like that TIFF file. So I click on this smaller one that I've clipped. Or if you um, already have one, it converts it into an HDF file. So say I already have, you know, my HDF file that RAS is already converted, then I can use that. So I already have mine in here. So, and then another really cool feature, you can add shape files in here. So I know exactly where my tax, where my property is. And this is the flood boundary that FEMA gave. You can see it's quite a bit different than where it should be. It probably should be slid uh, down south quite a bit. Okay, so let's build, I'm going to build my actual model here um, within RASMapper. So first, go to geometries. I'm going to add a new geometry. Call this e four. Add a river, add a geometry. I don't need to go back too far, but you know. I want to go a little bit downstream of your property because the uh, bound, downstream boundary condition is going to drive some of this flow rate. Uh, stop it. Save. Now I'm going to come in here and do some bank lines. Now this is going to set um, where the changes in my uh, Manning's ends are in the stream. You always want to go uh, down, from upstream to downstream in this as a boat flows downstream, as they say. Save those edits. And next, I want to draw in some cross sections. Now, these should be parallel. Did that work? Actually, did it as a river that time. We'll click on this first. And then... There we go. Okay. 
I definitely want some pretty close to my property. It's probably more than I need, but I'm okay with that. All right, I'm going to save, stop editing. And now I'm going to navigate right over to my geometry editor. I'm going to open my geometry. And here it is. It's already brought in. Pretty snazzy. Now I can click on my cross sections, and you can see it's already brought in. Some of these stations aren't probably in the location. Um, you can see where maybe where they should be up or down a touch. Um, but for this exercise, I'm just going to keep them where they are. So that might be a, something to improve on a future design. I still need to come in and add my Manning end values. Now, pretty conservative values you can use here. Uh, definitely would want to make sure you look at the type of stream that you have. But for this one, we use 0.1 for these outer banks and then 0.05 for the, for the channel. Now, something that's extremely conservative about this, I don't actually have bathymetry or topo uh, topography for the bottom of my stream. So in reality, this is probably going to come down even lower. So again, another piece of conservative design that I have in the system. You can see this Manning's end values are now showing up on the top. And that's what those bank stations define. Where does the Manning's end value change? OK, All right, let's save my geometry data. I'm going to go over to my steady flow analysis. Actually, I need to do uh, steady flow data. OK. So I'm going to put in my, let's see if I can remember my flow rate, 21. If you want to put more uh, flood events in, you can do that. You know, make this two or whatever you want to make, but I want to keep this at one. I really like to change the name. It's stuck on the old 100 year uh, naming con convention. I need to add a reach boundary condition in as well. Um, and I guess I have river two in there. Not sure what that was. I'm going to put this in as uh, normal depth with a, a low flow rate. I'm going to save this right in here and call this V. Actually, one other cool thing you can do with RAS Mapper, I can come in here and I can actually check with this. Uh, slope is and I'm with it right now. There you go. Plot terrain. There you go. Slope. Give me a 0.02. I can plot the terrain of that if I want. I could actually even you know check some of this terrain if I wanted to. I could save it as a profile on if I want and then come back to it later. There's a bunch of cool stuff you can do in here. Getting distracted here. Alright, let's do steady flow analysis. And I'm going to compute it. And for some reason, I have a second reach in here. Do a quick pause while I fix that. So what I did was I came in and I came back to my geometry editor, came up here to delete reaches, and I went to my reach two and I deleted it. All right, let's try this again. Okay. So now go back to my RAS mapper. And now I should have some results. And there you go. You can see how this is, how different this is. 
in this other one. Um, and there you go. If you wanted to export the new uh, boundary condition, you could manage result maps. And you could come in here and believe you add new map. So you do an inundation boundary. You do it as a shape a polygon. Um, and then this value, which if I turn off the depth, like you should be able to see. I can now export layer as a shape file if I want. All right, so hopefully that gives you enough information to determine the base flood elevation. Like I said, I didn't actually show you what that was. So I would then come in here and you can actually just click on it and you can hover wherever you want. This is actually the depth of water. I really want the water surface elevation. Um, 496 is the highest base flood elevation for this property. If you want to add a factor of safety to that, you are more than welcome to. I would definitely make sure I check the datum because I use 2017 LIDAR. I'm sure it's uh, on NAT 88 and in Clark County we use uh, NAT 2947 adjusted so I'd have to adjust for that value. Uh, but that's the quick way to uh, create a very quick model um, that you can use for floodplain modeling. If you have any questions feel free to contact me. Thank you very much.